Welcome, everybody, to the Parasite Podcast. My name is Frankie Deo. My name is Jenny Colucci. And I'm Anthony M. I'm going to remain slightly anonymous. <laughs> That's to maintain okay. the mystery. Right. So, the mystique. Anthony Mystery. That's- yeah, that's what the M stands for. <laughs> I guess a good point to start for this episode is just kind of talking about how we came into existence, a little bit about who we are, our philosophies, our mission in paranormal research. I guess I'll, I'll start about what we do, and that's we are a paranormal research team with investigators in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Ohio. We're building in other states as well. And we are a team that kind of does things a little different in the fact that we are evidence-based, we're science-based, but we come from it from a sensitive realm, which is maybe a little different than most teams. We hope that we're going to be bringing some really good, innovative stuff to the field of paranormal research. How we really started was at an investigation. It was actually at White Hill Mansion in Fieldboro, New Jersey. Was doing an investigation there, an overnight. There's like a creepy tub. We all know about the creepy tub at White Hill, right? <laughs> um, and I hear it sounded like somebody was in like needed desperate help. So I actually go downstairs and there is a situation going on. It was captured by Anthony M. When I was doing another podcast, I reached out to Anthony, searched him down, tracked him down, stalked him. That, was, him that wasn't creepy at all. <laughs> and, and yeah, so like, you know, I, I wanted to use the footage that um, he had shared on Friends of White Hill Mansion on Facebook. He was graciously allowing me to use the the footage. And that kind of like kicked things off. I was thinking about ways that I could do paranormal investigations with people that are really passionate about it, not have to go through like a tour company. They can get kind of expensive. Super great for people who really want to get into some really awesome places and some of the tour companies, you have to go through that. Me being me, I was just like, let me see what it's like to reach out to the locations and see if there are ways that private research and overnights and investigations can, can provide. I found out information. I reached out to Anthony M again and was like, bro, we, if you want to like do this, <laughs> like maybe as a smaller team and kind of like split the cost, it would be more cost effective, which would allow people to kind of like do more investigation. I mean, you guys know it's expensive. It's not a, it's not a cheap thing to be involved in paranormal. Yeah. All the, all the event hosts, they have people, they have to pay, they have to make their cut. And it's just these radically inflated prices that, that everyone has to pay to go. And it's just kind of not fun. <laughs> We know paranormal research is you're traveling a lot, you're staying in places that, like Anthony was saying, there's like a premium price. That's kind of how this whole thing springboarded. And then I was like searching basically um, for tri-state area uh, groups. And I stumbled upon these two ladies that I thought were super passionate. They reached out and were like, you know, it sounds like this is something that you really come looking to like pursue and then i found jenny jenny why don't you tell the story about like how we kind of sure sure it wasn't it it wasn't in the bathtub no (laughs) i have been in the bathtub (laughs) i have been in that creepy bathtub but that's not how we met and i have been to whitehill obviously before but that's not how we met friend of mine stacy who investigated with me for years saw you reach out on facebook for people who were interested and it just clicked with her right away and she got right on the phone with me and said jenny i found this guy frankie and immediately i don't think i gave you a choice i was like (laughs) appealing to everything i could like, hey, I went to Rutgers too, like anything to get you to take me. Because really, it's been in the back of my mind for a very long time to be with a smaller group who really could do more than just Stacy and I could do. Um, same thing. So it was really kind of, to use the expression, kindred spirits. And we found each other. And it clicked immediately. It's funny. We, t- we talk pretty much all day long, every <laughs> day. Um, and that's something like even our, I think our investigators um and our followers don't like really maybe that's what makes us unique is that <laughs> we communicate a lot about the development of our mm-hmm. organization as and our team i mean jenny and anthony can tell you i always talk about like organic development right. and right. relationships and i 
totally believe it may sound a little corny, but totally believe that the universe puts things in place and puts the people that you need in place with you to propel things moving forward for i was looking for a team i wasn't looking really for after i reached out to anthony and you know anthony was like totally could use my stuff and him and i started talking it was just like i wanted to build a team that really dedicated people you know, there's a million, million paranormal <laughs> research teams out there, right? You know, sure. It's just my natural personality to try to do things like not out of the box, but a little unique, a little innovative. And then like the conversations that were just taking place between the three of us. I'm like, if I'm looking for a left hand and a right hand, these are the two people to do it. Um, you know, just super dedicated. And like, I love the experience. You know, I'm not an expert. I came into doing i mean paranormal research for most of us has happened over a, like a, our lifetime right right um, different things in our situations and our other investigators the common denominator is like this stuff has been happening pretty much my whole life I in spooks i do believe in spooks i do i do i do i do i do i it just never got investigated I come from the world of psychology, so parapsychology is super interesting to me, and hearing people's experiences, not just the three of us or the people on our team, it's just like a common thing. It's like a lifetime situation. Um, right. I'm a forensic social worker, so I work with a lot of people who have like mental health, behavior health issues. The stories that you get, people don't know each other, but there's a common, there's like a common thing, like this started as a child. I want to tell you this. It developed through my adulthood. Paranormal like activity is almost like having some type of diagnosis, like where it goes, <laughs> like you start at one point and then it progresses over time. I guess let's start with Jenny. Like Jenny, how is your experience with paranormal activity, paranormal research? So for me, it's pretty much the exact opposite of most people. I was the one even at a young age who people would say, hey Jenny, go look under the bed. Something's yeah. under there. <laughs> or Jenny, something's in my closet, go see. And I would be the one to say, no, it's not. You know, I'm going to go look and nothing is in there and I'll prove it to you. So I was always interested in proving it wasn't there. All right. And All right. from the beginning, I reached out to Frankie and I said, I'll be very frank. I'm a skeptic. I'm a big skeptic. And I love that you were okay with that. You know, you weren't looking for someone to agree with you all the time. You weren't at all. Because where are we going to get? Right. It's important to have that that skeptic to kind of keep everyone else in place, you know, keep everyone in check. Exactly. But that was me, you know, even at a young age, I was never afraid. You know, I was always the one, you know, you walk past that scary haunted house, right. and, you know, and everybody be like, oh, I dare you to go in there. And I'd be like, well, I'm not going in because it, the floor might break, but I'm, I will go in because there are no ghosts in there. That was always me. Like Jenny will do it. She's not afraid. But I think I set out to sort of make people less afraid of the paranormal in general. Right. That's really my goal. More understanding than fear. Right. And I don't know that that's new, but that's my goal. Anthony, yes. well, how did you how did you get into this whole thing? I guess I'll give like more of the Cliff Notes version. I just remember being much younger as a kid and always going to certain places and feeling uncomfortable there, getting, you know, getting all sorts of weird vibes and everything, always being told to brush it off. That combined with just getting into horror movies at way too young of an age. Kind of, kind of left me open to not necessarily darker experiences, but I guess like supernatural experiences. So I kind of went through all that through childhood. Albert and I, who you now hopefully will probably get on the podcast at some point, Absolutely. we always used to talk about that as we were kids, you know, as we were growing up. At some point later on in my adult life, I went into law enforcement as a career and I kind of had to put all that stuff aside, all those feelings, kind of pack them away and ignore them. As I got more into doing paranormal investigations and things like that, I can open that box up again and kind of explore what I'm feeling, seeing, hearing, whatever it might be. And, and I think it's for me, it was the trifecta when I met Anthony and Jenny because of the fact you have one person that's like a skeptic, and that's Jenny. Anthony comes from a background where for his professional career, he is an investigator. That's what he does. And I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. I think it's a perfect union. And I loved how Jenny's like, we don't always agree on where we come from, but there's a respect level when Anthony and Jenny tell me things or make suggestions 
decisions, I actually put them into place. This is like a field where you're always learning. You're always learning new things. You're always trying new things. You meet different people who come from different perspectives, who have different experiences. And if you could take little pieces of everything, it just makes your experience as an investigator or the product that you yield so much better. I love the fact that these guys are, are joining me in this whole journey that we're all kind of like you know we're fairly new for full disclosure we we basically started in november of 2021 but we've grown leaps and bounds within the short time that we have been building the organization i just want to start off by thanking jenny and anthony because without them this is not possible you know we just wanted to kind of give you a little background about who we are a little bit about this podcast we're going to be talking about paranormal discussion Discussions. We're going to be having special guests on. We're also going to be giving you like our actual case reviews of investigations that we and have done. Most appropriate investigation or case file to crack open is White Hill Mansion. That's where we started as a group. I always talk about White Hill as some place like I actually have this weird obsession with it. <laughs> And maybe this is why. Maybe the house was like, hey, listen, we're going to bring you a, a team of people. And it's going to start here at White Hills. I just think in this country, you know, having traveled all over the world in this country to find a, a home that's like that from the Revolutionary War era is great. And I think in New Jersey, we have a lot of access to those types of places and we should take advantage of it. So, I, you know, I that was one of the first places that I really wanted to go based on the 300 years of history. Now, let's be clear, uh, you know, the Hyatt Hotel down the street that you just built could be haunted. It doesn't matter that it's 300 years old or 5,000 years old, but still we don't have access to that kind of history in this country. So I think we're very fortunate to have what some place like White Hill Mansion in right. New Jersey. And that was one of the first places that Stacy and I went together to investigate. It's a fascinating place. Absolutely. So many layers, so many families. You guys don't know anything about White Hill Mansion. History, it, it's something that we dig into about the location you're actually helping peeling the layers of the history there as a paranormal investigator so it's one of the oldest settlements at the time during the revolutionary period the fields lived there like jenny was saying it kind of evolved into some different things and i think that's what lends to the paranormal activity at White Hill it makes it a special place is because throughout the generations of it being in existence so it started out as a family home from the fields and Hessians came in and the and they basically took this house over which is like mind-boggling like when you hear that history they basically stationed themselves there because they were trying to get people who are against the british rebel kind of situation there were a lot of deaths at that location mary field lost her husband there some of her kids and then it morphed after the revolutionary period into it was a speakeasy at one point there's rumors that there was a bordello there it was a restaurant at one point. So there is a lot of different history that kind of has taken place. We'll talk about it in future podcasts, but the residual element and aspect of White Hill is tangible. You can right. feel like you guys tell me like how you guys feel about it, but it's almost like you it's thick in the air so much that you can feel it yeah there's definitely a lot of history that place went through so many iter different iterations and just people going in and out of it just different imprints going into that place and yeah the second you walk in there's a vibe there's a history there's an energy that's not there in other places you go to maybe that's why i'm like a little obsessed by it <laughs> <laughs> i always like to put myself in the place of like a mary field right I, when i walk into that place i think i'm mary field and i have seven children right seven children my i lose my husband and my home is being taken over and i guess as a woman i think you know wow what she went through as a mom i think Wow, what she went through. And I try to pick up on that vibe, on her emotions, on her life. When I go there, like, I too put my, I love how you said that, Jenny, I too put myself in. But that's like all investigations that I do. I try to like almost like recreate for myself 
what was going on at that time or that place. And think about like when I go there, a losing your husband, having seven children, and then the door is basically knocked down and you're right. left at your own devices to deal with the situation. There's nothing that you can do about it. I think that's it, the intensity too of it is what yields for a lot of paranormal investigation. So enough with the jibber jabber. So let's go <laughs> into the case file. And White Hill is under like a great restoration. Paranormal research and people who could do paranormal investigations there actually are contributing to the restoration of this great historical location in in New Jersey. Carries people to book an investigation at White Hill because you are contributing to it. This is Allison. She's in the children's room and she is wearing noise canceling headphones as well as a blindfold and that is so she can't hear me speaking as i ask questions so she can't read my lips she's also listening to sb7 spirit box so what she's going to do is just say what she hears in the same tone in the same type of voice if she can let us know if it's male or female or a child and just let us know what she's hearing but she does not hear my questions in my pocket is a ball because i know this is the children's room so i will also use that as part of this session this is called an estes method and this is like one of my favorite i love going to investigations and just watching this because it, it's a phenomenal method to investigate you get super interesting responses so let's just take a look at allison in the children's room at whitehill doing her estes session Hey, hi. <laughs> Thank you so much. I heard this is the children's room. I love children. I'm a mom too. What's your name? Talking. Yes, you're talking. I'm so happy that you're talking to me. Would you like to play? A ball? A ball. Yes, I brought a ball right there in the middle of the floor. Can so Jenny said that she brought a ball. Yes, okay. I had it in my pocket. She had no idea I had it. It's that's, incredible. That's why this is so, right. It's so fascinating to me. Can you touch it? Play ball. Let's play with the ball. Do you want me to start? Tell me if you see the lights. Do you like those lights? Careful. Get it. I'll get it. Should I roll it again? <gasps> your turn. It's your Listen. turn. Listen. Okay. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> what do you want to say? So I think that, that was pretty much Look at me. Okay, where are you? you? We need to know where you are so we can look at you. Can you tell me where you are? Kids. Kids. I love kids. Are you standing near one of us? And you're in the kids room. It right. Are you near the chairs? Are you playing a game? So Please. how old are you? I think you might be eight or nine. And that's for that Stacy guys. Right. Are you still here? Welcome. <laughs> okay. I love how she's like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Where and that's and that's so good when when that happens because I you know that he's just saying how many what kids you're are in not, here? Not right. trying to respond to us. Right, right, right. I just Allison. heard my name. Allison. Allison. Wow. Okay. That's always You know Allison? And that's Stacy. Hi. And I'm Jenny. I'm going to knock on the wall, and you knock back. Are you ready? Here we go. Ed? 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 Ed. Okay. Ready? I'm going to knock. Is that your name, Ed? Okay. Ed? Are you Eddie? And you could Edward? tell that she can't hear you because you could actually hear... Let's play a game. Here I go. I'm going to knock. Like in the back. And then it will be your round. Right. Go around. Go around. Wow. You want to play Ring Around the Rosie? That's a fun game. <laughs> That's the one that says, ashes, ashes, we all fall. What does it say? Kids. Kids again. Kids. You must have a lot of fun playing with your brothers and sisters here. Is there another game you would like to play? Are you playing hide and seek? I love this part. Would you like us to come find you? Good job. Oh my God, that gets, at some point you get so tired. So guys, I mean, the, the evidence like that is fascinating because right. especially like when you can get some type of spirit communication 
Allison at one point said it said her name. I mean, you don't get much more validation than that. And that's the stuff that, that's like the meat and potatoes that we, we look for, like when we're out there investigating. Cool. This is a really great example of an SD session because there are so many responses to the point where it can't be a coincidence. So like they always say like twice as a coincidence three times as a pattern. This is very much a pattern. This is a response to all these all these questions, all these queries or whatever it might be. There's always some kind of some kind of response. There's context to her responses. It's you can't deny it. Right. Or you can if you're if you're a massive skeptic like Jenny, maybe. Yeah. But <laughs> Well there is a there is a way that you can make words fit. And it's the same with something called the ov- ovulus that we use. That you right. can get a word and say, try to make it fit the situation. And there usually is a way. But what I love about this is this is a personality coming through. This seems like a child. This seems like I'm talking. She says, talking. And here we are. Hey. You know, hey, talking. Right. You know, go get it. You know, it's it's very much like a child would say. Right. And and I think what lent to the situation is like i'm all about the element who's in the room what the experiment is like what the history is like that's what's fascinating about paranormal research is when you're doing the investigation the way properly how it should be done you should be taking all that into consideration it was just like a perfect storm because you had moms in the room if it's you know you're in a child's room one one two you're getting interaction from like jenny said from like a childlike kind of personality and then you have moms in the room so it actually lent to spirits actually communicating and using the method the way that it's intended to work is is a, a communication between us and the spirits that are in the room right and in and in stacy and i also had other interactions in the mansion that night that were very childlike so right. like Anthony said, you know, three times is a pattern. And and we love that. I think mm-hmm. in one investigation mm-hmm. footage that I was reviewing, Jenny actually was like, you talk about layer. That's the layers of kind of like investigation and experimental research that we do that we want to see the validation to see really what's kind of going on. Uh, Jenny can t- attest to this, like from a skeptic standpoint, when I do come in as a, like in that modality, I'm usually pleasantly surprised that the opposite happened. I don't know if maybe because spirit activity kind of is like, hey, there's this person in the room that does not believe I exist. <laughs> so let me prove to them that like, I'm here. I'm here, guys. Right. Right. And I didn't tell her I had the ball in my pocket. And when she said play ball, I was pretty astounded. You know, we had some different experiences at White House. So we were downstairs by the bar, which used to be a, a speakeasy, supposedly. And we were playing music uh, from the 1920s as sort of a trigger, trying to get some interaction. So Stacy's offering to dance with the spirit. You can the- dance. I'll dance. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Mark or- When we talk about investigation, it's not just one thing. Right. We, we do tons of different experiments. It's a great kind of showing of that we just talked about Estes method and then we're we're doing k2 question the activity down in there and that's like probably i don't know you guys can have your favorite spots i guess everybody's at the creepy tub but besides the creepy <laughs> tub, the speakeasy to me had so much activity there's i don't know if it's the history the things that maybe have gone on down there for me that's where i got the most of my personal activity i, I like the speakeasy a lot also just because it's one of those places that's set up for interactions people go to a speakeasy to have fun they go to a speakeasy to meet up with each other and it matches very much that context when we investigate. We're trying to make contact, we're trying to socialize, and it just creates this environment that's conducive to interaction. I love that, Anthony, because like it's set up to be that social setting. It, it makes them a little bit more comfortable. I also think because it was a speakeasy during like prohibition, like, a lot of secrets kind of like maybe were talked about in conversation. Yeah. The whole mystique of them being in the speakeasy, you know what I mean? I think right. it's also for socialization, but like interesting stuff, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
that that's gone on down there even talks and rumors mob kind of activities down there so we can't confirm through the history that there's been murders there because of that we do know there is a they kind right. of gathered there so even their conversations are super interesting because everything was very kind of happening behind the, the scenes. Yeah, it's very, it was very secretive you know going into the speakeasy it's kind of like you're like you're in this exclusive group right, or this right. exclusive place <laughs> I, I think that was my long-winded like version of what you just said is like <laughs> that and and people you'll find i get a little long-winded that secrecy i think is interesting communication the way i look at it if we're going off that concept the ones that do communicate with us kind of like letting us in yeah to this like private club that was happening there that whole thing is interesting you, you, okay you have a story you want to tell and we're like the ones that want to hear it <laughs> so i guess really we're communicating with all the snitches huh right well, <laughs> snitches just, they're just talking like, to everybody <laughs> right just like i don't know it's just super interesting being able to like sit at the bar where people throughout history kind of have have sat at when you're down there and i love how like jenny well we do investigations we split up jenny was talking about building that atmosphere by playing the music and asking questions that are like period specific what jenny was asking in the children's room is probably not the same approach being right. in the speakeasy. So we even use different languages. In that case, we I spoke some German downstairs, I'm just trying to get a reaction. And also, there is a rumor that uh, women are not welcome behind the bar. So of right. course, where's the first place I went? <laughs> to the bar. Behind the bar. <laughs> <laughs> to to the see ball. what reaction I would get. So right. we do try, you know, and that's that's not really provoking, but it's more looking for a response. Well, that's like when the White Hill investigation that Frankie and I went to back on Halloween weekend, my wife was with us and she went behind the bar and right. I had a K2 meter in my hand and there were just massive K2 spikes all around her behind the bar. She was getting annoyed at me because I was just basically waving a K2 in her face in the dark. But <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, this is something's happening here. And she's like, I don't care. Get that out of my face. <laughs> um, you want to come around? You just stand around here for a little bit? Yeah, female, female. So she's coming around. What's your name? Shana. Shana is coming around to the back uh, bar. She's gonna make some drinks. You okay? All right. Sounds like you're okay. What's your favorite drink? We're gonna make some drinks. I heard something light, but I don't know. Let's do it. Well, we need to know what kind of drink you like. What kind of big drinks can you make? margarita spirits we're communicating yeah interestingly right. i had the the same reaction on right. my king too every right. time That's i walked behind the bar right wild. and uh, yeah super wild and it's confirmed a lot like dawn and her crew that charge of the restoration and spend probably more time there than they do in their personal homes. She even validates that, that when she's there, yeah. she gets like super activity pushes and from behind the bar and we throw people into that. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. It's usually me. Right. Like, Stacy usually says, can I lock you in that closet? Yes. Um, well, like right, you said, right. you're, yes. you're the skeptic. You're like, I'll go there. I don't care. I'll do it. Go ahead. <laughs> it's always Jenny. I'll do it. For me, I have a different room that I prefer. And I think I tend to pick the room that nobody else picks because I think it gets overlooked. For example, in White, White Hill, you walk in, there's the parlor to your right. Right. And people walk right past it. You know, they walk right yeah. past it and put their things down in the back, whatever it is. And they want to go to the speakeasy because it's sexy. Right. Right. Um, and I had more activity in that parlor every time. Just simply sitting there, like I said earlier, thinking about Mary Field, sitting there right. writing letters or answering that front door, you know, when the, the banging occurred and, and it was the soldiers. I, I had more activity there than anywhere else. And it is and we'll talk about other investigations, but that tends to be the the way it goes for me. I think that it's all about connection. A place like that 
the rooms literally speak to you. Yes, there are like, like Jenny said, like the sexier, more titillating, interesting rumors and stories that kind of go to. But you find that area where you just get that super like spidey senses go yeah. off. Right. And, you know, that you stay connected. And then I think through that is what paranormal activity, you're used as almost like a vessel, right. kind of. It's not like a medium, you know, don't get me wrong or anything like that. But you get that, it's just the connection. You start feeling it. Right. And I think the spirit activity gravitates to that. because Yeah, it's about sort of projecting that mindset and kind of, you're, you're basically getting what you put out there. And, and that's something like I really learned from Anthony. I'm glad he said that because he always says it's all about before anything, your intentions and right. what you're putting into it. I always try to keep that in the back of my mind. Even like just experiments that we do, I feel like hands on. And we'll talk about the super duper great privilege that we have to have people on our team that can build technology for us or build right. devices. And I think that's the same kind of concept. We always talk about putting the intention into it. It's more effective when it's not mass marketed or produced right. as far as technology. And uh, this is the same thing. We yeah. need to come at it from intention is prominent. And Anthony and I, we've had many occasions where we will walk into a room and just sit. You know, we'll sit on the floor, yeah, you know, yeah. that type of thing. And I know you and I have done that. And I think that's really important, too, because you put the stories aside. Mm -hmm. You know, you put everything aside and you just sit and listen. You listen right. to the house. We're essentially having a conversation. Yeah. And if you're constantly just going, if you're always going into a space and just asking questions, trying to expect a reaction, then that's a one-sided conversation. You have to sit. You have not just listen with your ears, but also listen to how you feel. That's the other half of the conversation. Exactly. And you may have evidence of it or not. For example, right. like Anthony might have, you know, or is, the hair is on his arm standing <laughs> on it. And I can and that, that has happened and I've taken a photo of it. But, you know, <laughs> that's, that's not everything. No. You just sort of have to sit, and it may be on a staircase. You have to think of the places that you wouldn't think of. Right, right. those those so spaces that are that are less traveled, they might be screaming yeah. for attention. They're just exactly. waiting for someone to be a source of communication, like avenue that they they utilize. When you guys talk about stuff like that, I think the paranormal field as investigators. We always want to be capturing evidence. And when we come at it from a science perspective, that evidence that we capture validates what we're trying to either prove or dis. But that, and we'll talk about it in future episodes. Thank God we have Anthony, you know, created a grading system for us, man. <laughs> but we talk about empirical and anecdotal evidence, right? People can get caught up. I think very easily. I raise my hand first to say that I, that it does happen to me. Like right. you're always chasing the empirical, right? But right. when you're doing what Anthony and Jenny say and sitting on the floor, just being and go, using yourself as the tool, I think is also like something that I'm learning that is super important. It's kind of like how I look at social work. Sometimes you have to find that window. And then once you go through that window, it opens up the conversation to happen in, in yeah. different ways ways you know maybe it goes she goes from anecdotal shifting to empirical over time right right yeah. you're not gonna if, if you walk into a room and you get you get those weird vibes that you're gonna be like all right you know what let me sit in here let me set up some equipment but you know that equipment or that empirical evidence kind of backs up that anecdotal evidence and vice versa. They kind of both give each other context. And for those of us who don't get vibes, like me, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm not as sensitive, but I can still sit in a room and I have an imagination as a human being. I, right. I am a human. I can relate to other humans. I can put myself in their position, like I said. I think you're more of a sensitive than you think you are. <laughs> I, think, I think we all are. No, but I think we all are to a certain degree. Like Jenny was saying, you're human. So you, yes. you, you innately have this energy that you, it can be proven, like scientifically, that right. we emit and radiate um, energies, energy bands. Right. So you're you're naturally going to get some type of, uh, and what I'm learning is trying to take my field of what I do as a social worker because it's very much from an empathic situation and bringing that to paranormal investigating. That's why I love having the mixture of Jenny and Anthony because it keeps me balanced. <laughs> it's all balanced, really. Yeah, yeah really we balanced. keep each other balanced. <laughs> right, because I think it's easy to fall in between. So I right. want to actually get to some more footage. So we don't only use you know high tech 
objects. We use old fashioned things and Anthony is really, really a fan of these. Things like dowsing rods. Which yeah, they I'm a big see. fan of dowsing rods. And yeah, I mean, you could even give us a couple examples of things like that. Dowsing rods. Pendulums. Pendulums, exactly. So in this case, Stacy is using dowsing rods. But of course, I had to pull out some type of equipment as well. <laughs> So I pulled out my K2 meter and we again felt like we were communicating with a child. So you'll hear my voice sound like I'm talking to a child. Good. Come sit next to me. I think I saw those lights blinking. Were you sitting there next to me? Yeah, good. That's it? Yes. Here, come sit next to me and we're going to watch Stacy, okay? Okay, come sit right next to me. Good job. Okay, I just want to play one more game if you don't mind. I don't want you to come near them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to think really hard to make them spin to see if I'm doing it, okay? Okay, so you sit next to me and, and Stacy's going to do it herself, okay? Here, make the lights go so I know you're next to me. Very good, very good. Okay, let's see what Stacy can do. I think she needs your help. That's I what too. I think. Okay, now, if you don't mind, just one more time. I know you're doing so much fun. Like, could you try to spin these again? How about one last spin before bedtime? You can do it. You're so strong. Try to make it spin. I see you're not sitting next to me anymore. Are you standing up helping Stacy or are you tired? It's okay if you're tired. One more spin. Almost. You must be, it must be hard. Yeah, I'm sorry. Good, good, good. You can do it. Nicely done. Nicely done. Wow, that was a big spin. Great job. Whoa. You're very strong. I, wow, they're going to get, oh, ooh, that was fun. They missed each other, but they hit me. <laughs> Did you like this game? Just crisscross them if you like them. Oh, I think you're back next to me. Well, you crisscrossed them, though. Oh, now whatever. It's a fun game, right? Thank you so much for playing with us. Do you want to come back and sit down? I have a spot for you right here. Good job. <laughs> Good job. How, when I would say sit down, the K2 would light up. And what I would right. say don't sit down, go see Stacy. It would, that's why I, that was my little comment there. Like, I see you're not sitting next to me. And that was sort of my validation that, hey, when this entity is not next to me, it's not lighting up. Right, right. right. That's the scientist in me saying that. But uh, that was pretty fascinating. It was almost on command, like sit next to me and it would light up. Right. Um, now, just to give you a little bit of background here, there are stories about one of the field children, Samuel. Uh, being present in the home and we were asking are you Samuel and we did get hits based on those questions so we really felt like we were speaking to a child right. and possibly Samuel well, again when we talk about like layers this is another example it's also another example of how the house will dictate how they want to be communicated the way we communicated and got interactions in the child's room in the speakeasy and here in the po parlor, I believe this is where this is taking place. Correct, Jenny? Yes, it is in the front parlor. Uh, the house was telling us, like, this is this is my mode of communication. Prime example of just different layers. You have a skeptic in the room. You have the K2 meter hits going off. You have a medium. And then you have a medium using dousing rods, a more traditional way of communicating in the paranormal. Right. And we're not just, as Anthony mentioned before, we're not shouting questions at a wall. We're not shouting questions at the house. 
we're trying to communicate with someone who walked this earth as a human being. Anthony had me uh, watch a uh, interview with like probably one of his last interviews with Hans Holzer, who we'll talk about in in, in next episodes. But he's like the, one of the founders of what we do. And he basically was saying, screw all this technology. <laughs> you have to make that connection with people. Right. It, right. All, right. it all starts with, and I love how Jenny said, this person was at one time walking the earth. That's where you have to make the connection. We're humans. We do that. Well, sometimes we don't. But <laughs> for the most part, we do communication like that's our thing that's what makes us different from like other species for allison got that evp and that's interesting because we were talking to a child but hers was very much a man right you know right. so it doesn't it's not even the room and russ was there talking you know to a colonel or whoever you know right. kind of thing it's, it's interesting because it's not just that they're children in the room and there are different it depends who's talking and how you're talking i love the fact that on our team that we have people that bring a lot to the investigation you have Jenny and you have Russ, who is Allison's husband, who joins us on our investigations, actually communicate in a language other than English. In this case, we had two people speaking German. We had German Hessians that we know that were in the room or moving through the house. And that's a super important way for us to communicate. We're communicating with them as people. Hans Holzer kind of said, really connect with not just the house. I love how Jenny said, like, not just the house or the room or whatever, it's that person. So this is some SLS footage in the speakeasy area. Myself and my wife, Shana, the thing is we're speaking very quietly because at the other end of the bar, there are some other investigators doing their thing and we didn't want to contaminate anything that they had once i put the camera on the end of the bar we saw a figure form and it was about child size and we assumed that maybe it could have been samuel and we were getting responses as you'll see <sighs> My first time using my SLS camera and I was having a hard time navigating with it because I kept forgetting that the image was flipped. Every time I tried to pan right to get more of the figure in the in the view, I kept panning left and I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> Plus it was really late that night. <laughs> but you know what I love is how you just, I, that was part of the story that I didn't even know that this was like your first time using the SLS camera. And yeah. Talk about like footage that you caught on your first right. on your first. Oh moment. yeah, this yeah. this was amazing. This this piece and the piece that we're going to see later. I was like, all right, you know what? The SLS is good to go. Mm -hmm. Right, right, and and one of my favorite go to tools, and it was because of Anthony's footage that I was like, I need to get an SLS camera. <laughs> and I love I love how you and Shana are like having this quiet conversation. Right. And how you were saying, Anthony, like there's other investigators in the room because this was like, a, as opposed to some of the private, like we've done White Hill private investigations. Anthony right. and I were at a, like a public investigation. So there's other investigators in the room, but I love how like you're whispering conversations and yeah. it's intelligently responding to you. Mm -hmm. Anthony, I always talk about the telepathy part of it is almost like sometimes you don't have to verbally say things just the thought of right just putting mentally putting it out there yeah no the, it, it was really cool because we were barely talk it's, it's almost like where when you ask questions in these situations be it with an sls or getting any kind of response it's almost like when you're saying it you're almost saying it for the other investigators or you're saying it to capture it on a voice recorder or a camera right. we're watching it like you're asking it for to intelligently manipulate the space right yeah. so you're saying can you wave you're asking it to do things physically right. and it's responding yeah, yeah. Right. and you i know? think that's crucial with an sls camera because it does map things like chairs or oh yeah 
Uh, yeah, there's a clock at White Hill. It mapped um, one time, and I and I felt very badly because there was an investigator there who was very excited about this, you know, clock being mapped. Right. You know, and I, I was like, well, it's a it's a mapping the clock, and here's how you can tell. And you know, that's it was sad, but at the same time, it was an educational moment because she learned how to find out, hey, is this real? And by asking, can you wave? Can you? move then you know it's not the clock yeah right. and regardless yeah. of what piece of equipment you have nothing is foolproof you're going to get false right. positives on everything yes i probably ruined her night but at the same time i think that when you do find i always say a skeptic is your best friend because when she does find evidence that waves back right it's going to be amazing it's that much better yeah yes to go back to what i was saying in the beginning is none of us are experts so it's a learning opportunity if you open yourself up if you approach it that way and open yourself up so when investigators that you're working with say hey it's the clock right right so say understand and and be open to the fact of saying yes that is a clock you know because <laughs> it's very easy to like anthony said kind of like get mixed messages or false positives and that's why we investigate in teams or groups or pairs because you should have somebody there hopefully kind of either confirming that something is going on or saying like jenny said it's the clock <laughs> i was gonna say we, we all get caught up in in oh. these investigations everyone wants to take home a story everyone wants right. to say that something crazy happened but with there being plenty of false positives is what we do it's always good to kind of keep people in check with that and it just makes them better investigators later on further down the road because then they can like we said like you get the wave it just makes that waving experience on the sls that much better i going back to what frankie said about working in a team at white hill mansion there was a rocking chair and three of us were standing there and it started rocking it was rocking yeah. on its own and of course i immediately set to see you know did somebody step on a board that made it rock you know we right. always go into debunk mode we and we right. just you know what i think most investigators do but we really really take that seriously so we went right into that mode and it turned out that there was a possibility that one of us had hit it with our jacket and okay. at that point we had to throw it out as incredible as it was and as much as you want to say we had, we saw the rocking chair go move on its own right you know that the whole when in doubt throw it out but you have to you have right. to so that's why it's good to ask each other did you touch it did you touch it is it possible like you said you have to ask each other and it's good to keep an eye on it because somebody may have said i saw your your jacket hit it sorry to burst your bubble no, but no. and i because you bring up a good point like what you see guys on tv we all love paranormal shows looking at it like from an entertainment standpoint versus like what we know now because we investigate actively is it's like 95 percent time it's probably like no activity right it's that five percent that jenny is talking about that we were experiencing but also needs to be validated so like at the end of investigation it could be like 98% stuff that we have to throw out because it's either debunked or it's nothing's happening. And it's like that leftover 2% that we walk away with. But it's super important to have people with you. So if you're investigating viewers, make sure you're not doing it alone. One, for safety reasons. Two, because you need that validation from another party. Yeah. But I want to set up this next piece and then I'm going to let Anthony describe it. But the reason why I'm is setting it up is because how I reached out to Anthony. So I'm in the creepy bathtub, which is like on the second floor, doing what you're not supposed to be doing and investigating by yourself. Sitting in the bathtub, and I hear like a distressing gentleman. I literally sat in the bathtub for a while because you can hear a pin drop, and you can hear this gentleman calling out for help. So I got out of the bathtub, and I went downstairs, and... Anthony, you kind of set us up for what we're about to watch. All right. So when this happened, while you were in the bathtub, I was in the main room where the hosts were hanging out. One of the hosts says, someone says they're being held down by something. Can you grab your SLS and see if you can pull anything up? So I'm like, all right. And I get to the scene. It's at the foot of the stairs right by the front door. And there's this guy lying on the ground. He's saying he can't get up. Part of me is kind of like, okay, I mean, maybe... This guy is in some kind of trouble, or maybe this guy's hamming it up. I, I don't know. 
Right. You know, because when you see something like that on investigation and it's someone you don't know, someone you don't have experience with, my mind immediately goes to skeptic mode. Right. So I've got my SLS. I'm standing like maybe five feet from him and nothing's coming up. And I'm like, ah, all right. But I'm like, you know, what? let me explore a little bit more. So I walk up the steps to the first landing, which is where the, you'll see the camera shooting down on him. And there's this gigantic SLS stick figure standing directly over him. You can't really see him on the SLS footage, but he is at the very bottom of the frame. And it just, I don't know, I have no explanation for it. You know, you have someone on the ground saying that they're being pinned down by something. And on that camera, there's something pinning someone down. And and it's funny because, like, Anthony and I didn't know each other at this point, but we were in the same room together. And I'm literally sitting a couple of stairs right off of Anthony's shoulder. I have, like, full view of what's going on in the SLS. And, oh, so that's where you were. <laughs> right, right. Like, and it was super interesting for me because, like, yes, I've seen SLS footage on shows, but this was, like, the first in-person where I'm literally in the room in the environment and kind of know what's going on. To me, it's super fascinating. Oh, yeah. Thank you, yes. The police are coming. Go, go. So just also, so so our viewers know, you're going to hear some voices. So you, there's the gentleman that's kind of on the floor in distress that you cannot see, like Anthony was saying, on the SLS. And then it's the tour guide from the tour company um, that's kind of the female voice that you hear in the background trying to orchestrate how this, we're going to get this guy off the floor. Right. Just, No, I mean, I, that's why I went out and got the spray, because it's an infection spray. But it's like a What's that? It's Florida water. So it's for cleansing, purification, ward off low vibrational energies and entities, protection. <laughs> It's like, like, it's like, it's like almost like straddling him. Undeniable footage. The other thing I want to point out with that is that if you, if we were to look at that space in White Hill Mansion, there's nothing on the wall or anything that would kind of create a false positive of a figure. It's not like there was a clock there or a chair like we talk about. That was just an empty wall that wouldn't map out that figure. Wow. Right. Right. 
this was at the bottom of the stairs? Yes. So, like, right at the bottom of yeah. the stairs, there, like, there's a small little, like, correct me if I'm wrong, Anthony, like, there's, like, a little, little like, walkway kind of thing. Yeah. And it's, like, the, the front door. So yeah. it's a very small space. There's nothing. Right. That, that black strip that you see on that red field on the screen is, I think, actually, like, the the windows on the wall that frame the door. I oh, think right. that's what it is. And again, it's blank space. Again, nothing on there. No, no pictures hanging up there or anything like that. And that, that figure is just massive. It goes all the way up the wall and all the way down to the floor. And yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Talk about whipping out your SLS camera for the first time and then capturing two great pieces of ev- evidence. And, and just so everybody knows, the gentleman did get up. Took him a while to, like, kind of, like, decompress mm-hmm. from what was going on. He was removed and sat in a, in a safe, what they call it, like a safe room, just till he recuperated. Something like that is our experiencing, and it. it's probably physically draining. And he was, he was like, totally wiped out after. We want our viewers to know that this is kind of, like, the format that we're going to be talking about to you guys and bringing you evidence and having conversations about paranormal research and investigation. We will also look for you guys to give us like feedback. So leave comments in the comment section. We want you to subscribe. So hit subscribe, 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 hit the like button, hit the bell notifications. So you will get notifications on all our new episodes that we're going to be bringing you. In our next episode for episode two, we're going to be discussing paranormal kind of conversation around high tech versus traditional methods. The importance of both and validity of one or the other. And then we're also going to have a really cool case file that we investigated which is Kreischer Mansion in Staten Island, New York. Another great, phenomenal location. Um, So stay tuned for that. We want to bring you some really good episodes with some great guests and evidence and all that stuff. So Anthony, Jenny, and I, I can speak for them. Like We're super jazzed up that you guys are joining us um, on this journey at the Parasite Podcast. Stay tuned for our next episode, and we will see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Want to be part of Team Parasite? Visit our Shopify shop and get some of our super awesome merch. T-shirts, hats, hoodies, long sleeves, and accessories. Shop now.